Welcome to this next video in which we are discussing polynomial rings which are unique factorization domains. Okay, so what I've now successfully managed to do is write my polynomial p prime of x as a product of polynomials p1 bar of x, p2 bar of x, all the way down to pn bar of x. Okay, where all of these polynomials are from uh, the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. So this seems to be going well, but I need to make sure now that these polynomials are actually uh, irreducible in my ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. Now, before we do that, let me just point something out about these polynomials. How did we get them? Okay, well, let me just remind you of how, where we got them from. We got them from this initial factorization here of p prime of x into irreducible polynomials in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field f adjoin x here. Okay, now, how did we modify these to change them from being capital P1 of x, capital P2 of x, all the way up to capital Pn of x, to now being lowercase p bar um, 1 of x, or lowercase p2 bar of x, etc.? Well, we didn't actually do that much to them. All we did is multiply them all by some element of the unique factorization domain R. So, for instance, P1 of x was multiplied by uh, this element here to get rid of the denominator, to clear the denominator here. Okay, and then what did we do after that? Well, the second thing we did was we applied this proof technique that we were using in Gauss's lemma, where we were cancelling off common divisors of all of the co coefficients. Okay, but effectively, all that's equivalent to doing is multiplying them by 1 over uh, p1, or 1 over p2, etc., all the way up to 1 over pn, uh, in the case uh, that we were working still in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. So, in fact, all we've actually done to those initial polynomials, the capital pi of x's, to turn them into the lowercase pi bar of x's, is multiply them by elements of the fraction field. Okay, so these have just been multiplied by fractions. Okay, so I want to put a note of that. It's going to become important, and it's important for an understanding point of view as well. Okay, so these pi bar of x's, they are just, uh, how can we say it, are f multiples, okay, so this is an f multiple um, of um, the capital pi of x, okay, so that's an important understanding point. We haven't really changed them that much, we've just multiplied them by some element of the fraction field effectively, okay. Uh, it's also going to be important in actually proving that these are still uh, irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain, so that's also why we're, uh, we've looked at that fact. Okay, so now let's actually take on the question of irreducibility. Okay, and this is the part where you really do need to watch the video on Gauss's lemma, because we're going to use what I call the corollary of Gauss's lemma in that video. Okay, so if you haven't seen that, uh, then do watch uh, the video on Gauss's lemma. Okay, so firstly, the point thing to point out is that because p prime of x is a primitive polynomial, so remember uh, this we were assuming was a primitive polynomial because we pulled out uh, the greatest common divisor of the uh, coefficients uh, of the polynomial to get it. Okay, so remember that means you cannot pull out a constant polynomial from this that is not a unit. Okay, so I claim that now means that all of these p1 bar of x, p2 bar of x, all the way up to pn bar of x, all of these are primitive polynomials as well. Okay, so why can I claim that? Well, let's suppose that one of these wasn't a primitive polynomial, then it would be possible to pull out from all of the coefficients some non-unit element. Okay, there would be some common divisor of all of the coefficients that was not a unit, and of course then you could bring this right up to the front of all this great big product, and then of course it would be possible to write p prime of x as this constant times what's left here, the p1 bar of x times what's left of that say p2 of x uh, bar, uh, etc. Okay, so I claim that if one of these was not primitive, then it would imply that this one was not primitive, because if you could pull out um, 
some non-unit from this, then you'd also be able to pull out a non-unit from this, because this, remember, is just this. Okay, so if you are capable of pulling out a non-unit element from one of these, then it, it would imply that this was not primitive. Okay, so saying that this is primitive then implies that all of these are also primitive. Now, the corollary of Gauss's lemma tells us uh, when we uh, can say that a certain polynomial is uh, irreducible if it's primitive. Okay, so the corollary of Gauss's lemma says that if you have a um, polynomial p of x, let's say, uh, which is uh, in a unique factorization domain a join x, okay, so it's in a ring of polynomials over a unique factorization domain, then it's going to be irreducible if and only if it's irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Okay, uh, so now what we need to do is take these primitive polynomials, we know they are primitive polynomials now, and we need to ask, are they irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field? And if the answer is yes, then we can instantly conclude that they are irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. Okay, so all of these polynomials then, p1 bar of x, p2 bar of x, all the way up to pm bar of x, they all can be thought of as being elements of the ring of polynomials over the fraction field, and we now want to ask, are they going to be irreducible? And the answer is yes, because look at this. They are just f multiples of these polynomials, capital PI of x, okay? And these polynomials uh, were irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Now, all we've done then is multiply these polynomials by a certain fraction, a constant polynomial in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field, to get these new lowercase bar polynomials. Okay? Now, remember, the constant polynomials in a ring of polynomials over a field are units. Okay, they're all units. So effectively, I have just taken p1 of x and multiplied it by a unit to get p1 bar of x here. Okay, and likewise for all the rest. So actually, this is just an associate of this in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Okay, so if this is irreducible, then this is also irreducible. Okay, uh, so uh, these polynomials then, p1 bar of x, p2 bar of x, all the way up to pn bar of x, they are all irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. And now by the corollary of Gauss's lemma, which I'm not going to prove in this video, you do need to have watched the video on Gauss's lemma, um, we can say that they're also irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the fraction, uh, sorry, over the unique factorization domain. Okay, so they are irreducible. Bingo. I have now shown that this primitive polynomial p prime of x can be written as a string of irreducible polynomials in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. Okay, and that was what I needed to prove in order to show that any non-constant polynomial could actually be written as um, an irreducible factorization in the ring of polynomials over that unique factorization domain. Okay, but there's another thing that we need to show that this is unique, okay, up to the fact that you can have different associates. You can play around with it in that way, but no other way. Okay, so what I'm now going to show, do is show that it's unique. So again, we're just going to work with our primitive polynomial because we know that the bit for the constant polynomials is unique, okay, because that's just from the initial unique factorization domain, so we only need to show it for this primitive polynomial. Okay, so how are we going to prove uniqueness then? Okay, well this argument doesn't take too long. Okay, so let's suppose that we had two different factorizations into irreducibles then of my primitive polynomial. So how should I write this out? Okay, so I think, um, well we'll keep the bar notation for now. Okay, p1 bar of x, p2 bar of x, all the way down to pm bar of x, okay? So this is a factorization into irreducibles in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain R, okay? Uh, now let's suppose that we have another factorization down into irreducibles, so let's have, uh, how shall I denote this? Let's have p1 bar prime of x, so I'll denote this second one with primes, p2 uh, bar prime of x, all the way along to, and now Potentially, we have a different number of irreducibles, and of course, I'm still using my blunt way of writing the irreducible factorization. So let's go up to p m bar uh, prime 
uh, of x, okay, and this is my second factorization into irreducible. So these polynomials might be completely different, okay. What I now want to show is that they are equivalent to one another, these two factorizations. I can turn one into the other by tinkering around with which associates of these polynomials I'm using. I want to prove, for instance, that if I take my p1 bar of x here, okay, I will find one of these as an associate of this, okay, some unit uh, times uh, this will make one of these. Okay, right, uh, so how am I going to show this? Well, this is where I'm going to go back to working with the ring of polynomials over the fraction field, okay? Um, I'm going to use the fact uh, that these factorizations into irreducibles also do as factorizations into irreducibles in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Okay, uh, so let me just show you this. Uh, so um, we're now going to move back over to working with the fraction field uh, adjoin x here. Okay, so all of these polynomials, p1 bar of x, p2 bar of x, all the way up to pn bar of x, and the same for the primed ones here, they're all elements of the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain, but of course that means that they're also elements of the ring of polynomials over the fraction field, so that's absolutely fine, they're all in there. So these expressions are perfectly valid in here. Okay, I claim that if these are irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain, they're also irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. That's by uh, the corollary of Gauss's lemma. You see, we're still assuming that p prime of x here is a primitive polynomial. And for the same argument as we had above, that means that all of these polynomials, the p1 bar of x, p2 bar of x, all the way up to pn bar of x, and the same for the primes here, are all primitive polynomials. Okay, and by the corollary of Gauss's lemma, if you've got a primitive polynomial in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain, and it's irreducible in there, then you can also conclude it's irreducible in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Okay, so we can conclude that all of these polynomials are irreducible over here. Okay. Now, uh, that means that these are factorizations into irreducibles in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Now, of course, we know this is a unique factorization domain, so that means that these two factorizations must be equivalent in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. So the first thing that we can conclude from that is that n is equal to n. You do not have a different number of irreducibles, okay? Um, because this is a unique factorization domain, so these irreducible, the number of irreducibles you have in your irreducible factorization must be identical. Okay, so you can firstly conclude that n is equal to m, and now what we also know is that if I look at this top one here, I can turn it into the bottom one by uh, changing my associates, okay? So I can go through, for instance, and I can start with p1 bar of x here, and I can say, okay, if I multiply this by some unit, I can find uh, one of these that it's equal to. Okay, so let's say is equal to pi bar prime of x. So what I can say is that there will exist one of these, one of these irreducibles in this bottom uh, factorization here must be an associate of this, i.e. it must be a unit times it. Okay, uh, some unit in the fraction uh, field adjoin x at the moment. All we know is that this is a unit in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field at the moment. Okay, what we now need to show is that this Go, uh, transfers into the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain, okay, uh, that this will also be an associate of this one in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. So what allows us to conclude that? Well, let's work with this a little bit more. Okay, so this is a unit in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Now, of course, in a ring of polynomials over field, the units are all of the constant polynomials. So that means that this is just some fraction. Okay, so I'm going to change u here to a over b here. It's just some fraction because those are all of the units in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Okay, so now what that allows us to conclude then is that b times p1 bar prime of x is equal to a times p1 bar of x here. Okay, so if it's true that uh, p1 bar prime of x is equal to this fraction a over b times p1 bar of x, then 
to turn that from being an equation that only makes sense in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field into an equation that makes sense in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain, what we can just do is multiply both sides by b to get rid of the denominator. Okay, our old trick for transferring a statement from the ring of polynomials over the fraction field to into a, a statement in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. Okay, but where now? Um, look at this. These two polynomials, p1 bar of x and p1 bar prime of x, these are primitive polynomials. Okay, so that means that if you look at this polynomial on the left-hand side here, so b times this, the greatest common divisor of all of the coefficients here is b. If you look at this polynomial on the right, which is a times p1 bar of x, the greatest common divisor of all the coefficients of that polynomial, and I mean at the moment, you swallow the constant into the polynomial. So imagine swallowing the constant into the polynomial, multiplying out, basically. Okay, the greatest common divisor of this one would be b, the greatest common divisor of this one would be a, but that's rubbish in a unique factorization domain. Okay, uh, the, where, which the coefficients are all in. Okay, the coefficients of this polynomial and the coefficients of this polynomial are all in that unique factorization domain R. The um, greatest common divisors of the coefficients must be the same up to the fact that you have a different unit. Okay, so what does that now mean? That means that A must be equal to some unit times B. Okay, uh, it can't be any other way. This one must just be a unit times this one. Okay, because in a unique factorization domain, there is only one greatest common divisor up to the fact that you can tinker around with units. Okay, so this other greatest common divisor here must just be a unit times b. Okay, but now why is that interesting? What well, means that I can now change this equation? And, and note, this unit here is now a unit in the unique factorization domain R, not a unit in the fraction field anymore, uh, a unit in the unique factorization domain R. Okay, so now modify this equation, substitute this in for A, and you'll get a unit times B. Cancel off the B, because we know that the ring of polynomials over the, uh, sorry, over the unique factorization domain is an integral domain. Okay, and then what we finally do get is that P bar 1 prime of X is equal to some unit in the unique factorization domain R, and therefore a unit in the ring of polynomials over that unique factorization domain times uh, P1 bar of X. Okay. Uh, oh, and, and I should, I do apologize. This was an arbitrary index I rather than one. I've been reading it wrongly as I. It didn't necessarily have to be P1 bar prime of X that was the associate of this one. It just had to be the case that one of them in here was an associate of P1 uh, bar of X in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field. Okay, so now what I have shown you then is that this associate, which was an associate of uh, p1 bar of x in the ring of polynomials over the fraction field is also going to be an associate of it in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. And uh, this argument works equally well for all of them. And therefore, indeed, you can turn this one into this one by tinkering around with associates where you're just multiplying by units in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. Okay, so they are equivalent to one another is what I've so far proven to you. Okay, using the fact that the ring of polynomials over the uh, fraction field is indeed a unique factorization domain. And that now completes our proof, because we've now taken this primitive polynomial and shown that it has a factorization into irreducibles uh, in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain, which is unique up to the fact that you can mess around with associates. Okay, And that's all we needed to show, because we've already now uh, shown that if you take an arbitrary polynomial, where is it? An arbitrary polynomial p of x here, and you want to factorize it into uh, irreducibles, you can just write it as d times a primitive polynomial, okay? And we know that d can be factored down into irreducibles in the ring of polynomials of the unique factorization domain, and we now know that p prime of x can be factored down into irreducibles in the ring of polynomials over the unique factorization domain. Both of those factorizations are unique up to the fact that you can mess around with associates, and therefore the whole thing is unique up to the fact that you can mess around with associates. Okay, so to conclude, it is true then that if you take a unique factorization 
factorization domain, and of course the star one, the star one that everyone loves, would be the integers. And you generate a ring of polynomials over that unique factorization domain. In the case of the integers, you'd get the ring of polynomials with coefficients in the integers. Then that ring of polynomials with coefficients in the unique factorization domain will itself be a unique factorization domain. And with that, we will end this discussion.